Okay. I don't know how much of that I'll use for cold intro because we kind of despoiled the whole show. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did. So whatever. Okay. I have it. Men's underboob, small boobs. Oh, I was actually, I was thinking of doing it in like. Small the, boob? Well, I was thinking, well, I was just thinking of the the order that I sent them in initially, which was the underboob, the Victoria's Secret, and then just to be fair. That's really the only reason I even threw the men's thing in there was just like for fairness. No, I want to talk about the men's thing. Do you? Okay. Yes. Because I wasn't really sure. Like, I'm not that weirded out, Chad. Because I'm. I didn't know. So <laughs> I didn't think you would be, but at the same time, like you just started giving me shit. It was a like, bad one for Scott to come to like, what are you talking? Like, no, it doesn't get this weird. <laughs> yeah, this is like you this was like the one weird thing. <laughs> He's like, What in that? You're looking at penises and I'm like, Well, yes. <laughs> she is not me. <laughs> for the record. So okay. Well let's get let's get the show on the road. Let's do We've it. wasted enough time. So that's kind of weird. I'm like seeing, even though we're being quiet, I'm seeing this thing jump. I think it's just the ambient noise. It's kind of weird. Ew. Anyway, no, it's fine. It's ghost hunting equipment. Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's be real quiet for a sec. Oh, you Look piss head. Now it's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm mad. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. Um, so this is Chad and Amanda talk shit about where mm -hmm. we will just talk about any random stuff that we want to. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, we are in a new location. We are in the satellite uh, studio today, mm -hmm. which is Amanda's dining room. The satellite of love. like in uh, Oh, Mystery Science Theater. Yeah! There you go. Nice reference. <laughs> um, God, that would be a fun thing to do sometime. Mystery Is Science Theater us something? Do, let's, yeah, we should do that to I something. I love it. I love those. Um, there's actually a website that I, I can't remember what it is called now. Rough something tracks. Riff tracks. I've I heard think of that. is what it's called. And I think it's those same guys do a bunch of other movies. And it's really the point of it is, is it's just the audio. So you go down, I don't know if it's like actually like a podcast or just whatever, but so you start it so with the movie. You start it with the movie and it's just them talking, making the jokes with all these other old movies. That would be funny. So that would be fun to do. I don't know I don't, if they I don't know if they if it's just specifically them or if they let other people submit stuff to them. I don't know, but I probably wouldn't submit anything to it because I'm not that funny. I like to think I'm funny. I'm not that funny. I like to think I'm hilarious. I'm probably funnier when I'm drunk. No, I am not funnier. You're not. When I'm you're drunk. just sloppy. No. I know I'm not. Oh, I was kind of curious, like, to see how this night went because whenever I, whenever I knock on the door today, I didn't even really knock on the door. I guess I did knock on the door once I did get here because I made a couple trips from my car up to here bringing stuff up. Yeah. But her dog was going nuts, and then I went ahead and knocked on the door to say, "Okay, I'm officially here." <laughs> and she opens the door and she's like, "Got a glass of wine." And I'm like. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have one of those nights. <laughs> Just, no, it's not. Amanda's going to get right sloshed <laughs> while we're recording. <clears throat> I calm down. Yeah. but uh, So we just finished our other show, um, Secular Perspective. Go check us out on that. Uh, we had a kind of, I can't really say, kind of, he's kind of a guest because he's not regular back, but the guy that used to record that show with me came back and recorded one he's with us like, tonight. Um, so the series creator of Law and Order. It has nothing to do with it. But then yeah. the, he's Dick Wolf. And then comes back. <laughs> yeah. Like goes away and then comes back. Yeah. We talk about him all the time. We do. And he looms large. Yep. So um, but anyway, so we've got a few things. I, I don't even really know. We'll just see where the we'll just see where the conversation takes us. Yeah. Because I I found a few stories and I th I think our viewers, ba based on some of the hits that I've been seeing on YouTube, I think this might be a popular topic with people. <laughs> And and I didn't really think about it, crowd. and I and I didn't think about it until you called me out on it just a little bit ago. She said, "Oh, you're just doing it for the clicks," and and uh, well, now I am. So, <laughs> so we found a few stories this evening that we'll talk about. That I just the first one I thought was interesting, just as a topic. The second one I found later, and it was like, "Oh, this actually kind of ties in neatly." With the first one and then the the third one i grabbed is like okay well just to be fair 
and even keeled amongst the whole thing. I'm going to throw this third one in. No, I'm really in. happy about the third one. I'm going to talk. I bet you are. I'm going to talk at length about <laughs> Oh, my God. That's awesome. That's another good one. She is on fire tonight. I am really that funny. <clears throat> and I'm sober. That wa- the wine was it's gone. It's gone. All Nothing. right. So um, I am kind of at a loss tonight. Um, for anybody that's watching here on YouTube, we don't, you know, we're not in my office. I don't have my monitor with everything pulled up. She's got her laptop. Oh, it's kind no, of in a spot. You could actually share. turn it. You can turn it around and share this time. Thank you. Here's here it is. Here it is. You. Oh boy. And feel free to touch it and like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, like you could. Scroll. I can scroll with the sc- you, yeah. yeah I'll just, well, I'll probably just use the trackpad to do it. Well, fine. Yeah, because it's be like that. I will be like that because I'm being more respective, and it's just I don't want to reach that far over there. You don't want to touch her boobs. Oh, I'll touch her boobs. Oh God! Right there, I want shoot. See, I double clicked oh. there. Did something weird. Um, so this first story, this this is from which cracks me up too, is the the name of this website that this is on is this Hello is, Giggles, which Zoe Deschanel. This is Zoe Deschanel site. Mm-hmm. site. Yeah, I actually got this off of Facebook rather than Reddit, which I usually get most of my stories from. So I do. I I follow her Hello Giggles. On oh, Facebook. I, I like love it. her. So that's how we ran across this story. But I don't know what the real market for this is. Nor do I. But somebody made a bra. And I can't even say that somebody it's not even original. That's the thing. Is um if you go to the, the bottom of the article, there's like a, a Twitter picture of some Japanese girl that had designed this ahead of time. And somebody's just expanded on it. But what this is, this is a bra that rather than being a push-up bra, I guess, and, and it's extenuating the right word I would use for that, or or really, you know, fo- it's, it's I should say a- rather than focusing on upper cleavage. Yeah. Great choice. Yeah. It's it's more about the under cleavage. And I can't even really say there's that uh. much cleavage there because to me, correct me if I'm wrong here, it, to me, the word cleavage really is defined by the space in between the crack or how much. I don't know what you would really call that, but oh, I mean, I'm yeah. trying and I'm trying and I'm trying to be like technical here and not be like a 13 year old boy. But like, <laughs> no, I hear it. It might be under cleavage, I but know. I don't know if under cleavage is the right thing because, like I said, to me, the word cleavage is the top. Really, is like is the, the top in that. It's the chest butt crack. The, the chest butt crack. There you go. <laughs> I won't and, be mature and about I, this. And you can't really create. I would think if you were creating you know, a chest butt crack, the boobs would have to come closer together. You know, for people just listening, I'm like, you know, trying to squeeze boobs together with oh, my hands so here in the air. Oh, so your thing is that they're not touching, so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. In my, in my mind, cleavage is more. This is the equivalent of assless chaps to me. Like, what is it the is. freaking point? Yeah, I don't get it because, like, you're totally covered on top. Like, it's it's this is it's a bra like, with sleeves. It's They're a bra sheer. with sleeves. They're yes, sheer, but it looks like sleeves. it's like a t-shirt, a very sheer t-shirt that then has extra lace around the nipple with, areas, like the Batman signal. It is kind of like a, in a weird way, yeah. But then, I don't understand what the purpose of the straps are. No, neither do I. They're not holding anything. They're up. not holding anything. Like up. There's no support unless it unless it's like a very lame ass attempt at support. Uh, maybe because if you if if you scroll down to the bottom, I'm gonna keep this. Ah, you, you gotta touch it. If you scroll down here though, like the the Twitter pictures of this Japanese chick. Well, hers you know, makes way more sense actually because it's it's, it's more on the side. Yeah, hers basically just looks like she took a basic bra and cut some holes in it. <laughs> she does. That's really all that is. She cut some holes in it, probably stitched along the side to keep it from coming apart anymore. Yeah, called it a day. <laughs> and then somebody else saw this and it was like, "Ooh, this is a great idea." You know, I'm gonna capitalize on this and move on with it. So you know, rather than just being a basic white bra with a hole cut in it. They actually. This is not going to catch on. First of all, this isn't for any woman that has like boobs. Yeah, this this is more of a. Well, right here it says oh, something about A through C cup. Ooh, C cup go. is. Mm, I don't even know if C cup is. This is for A to B's. 
Yeah, it's for... It comes in band sizes, 32 to 36. And I don't I don't know cup Ooh. sizes. I don't... I just, well, I don't the follow 32 that to stuff. 36 is, is around your chest. Okay. Now, okay. Now that's including the boob and everything, too. Or is that. No, if it's you very didn't, weird if you because didn't, like if you went under the boob so that you weren't under. counting the circumference. So mm-hmm. you go under that. So it's really more chest size, yes. not counting just the chest actual size. boob. And then the cup size is. The cup size is actually based on something. It's like if you're an A cup, it goes one inch out. If you're a B cup, it goes like. Two inches out, C, C three. Thin. It's based on inches. Oh. It goes out like. I never like knew this. Like I'm learning. I'm spot. learning something today. <clears throat> but I don't. There's some bras that haven't caught up with how boobs actually work. Because the other day, this is oversharing. I'm gonna do it. I tried on. All right. Do I? And do this I need to is do weird those? because it was like from Calvin Klein. So you think like they might have the like the top designers working on this. Maybe. And it the bra was so freaking weird. First of all, like you remember the cone shapes from the nineteen fifties? <laughs> yeah. It tried to make my boob do that. Ew. And I was like, who designed this? They don't do that. So it tried Somebody to make Somebody has it a conical. very skewed perception like, of I thought, what I thought we were done with that thinking like Madonna they were, did that in the eighties. I know. They tried to Madonna my boob and I was like, Kelvin, no. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's, I never liked that look. It's funny, you know, because I was actually mentioned earlier this evening that I just watched um, Pleasantville last yeah. night. <laughs> and there's a part in it where, you know, it's just relevant. as soon as she gets, yes, it is, it was relevant. It is and relevant. she's talking about, you know, like, what's with this bra? I got like, you know, three layers of underwear on here and my boobs shouldn't be doing this. And he's like, don't worry about it. Like nobody here is going to notice that anyway. They just don't. <laughs> but she's like, I could put somebody's eye out with these things. Oh, I would hate to have to wear I mean, the I can't, bras of yesteryear. Oh, they look terrible. I mean, I can't imagine just the kind of crap that girls have to go through. Just all the extra prep work i guess for having to i worked at wear, pennies, a, wear a bra and having to worry about extra support and stuff like that because if you don't have the, i'm assuming if you don't have the right size it would either squeeze too hard or if it was too loose then the other would be rubbing and that would probably <laughs> hurt after a little bit I, you, know what, you know what i'm saying yeah I know like saying. i just i i don't have to worry about that i worked and, at jc penny and they were going to make me a fit specialist because there was a separate store just for the lingerie oh, in the mall. Like it was its own store. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And um, it was women that worked there. It's a store for women. Boy, I, yeah. yeah. So you could become a fit specialist. Basically means you're putting women into bras all day. Gotcha. And not not nice looking women, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> These are like, I'm getting my bra from pennies, which I get some bras from pennies nothing wrong with that but, but um they, it, the, these you you were probably dealing with the women that had no other choice but to go there because they would probably only they have specialize their size. in a lot of like, like a older, older lady styles. styles yeah okay. that's what i would say okay so they're like do you want to be a fit specialist and i was like no <laughs> i mean you know i'm like not even 21 yet and um so I wish I would have done that though, because they say like something like seventy percent of women are in the wrong size bra, or don't okay. know. And I was like, well, how? What? What makes it the right bra? Like, I would love to know. I actually would like to know. So I yeah. kicked myself. Like, should have taken that fit that bra fit class, gotten huh. certified. Then I'd have. You to would just... get certified. Yes, it? certified. They're in the fitting oh, room. Oh wow! In the fitting room, like the fitting room was nicer too than a regular fitting room, and they had like their certificate with their photo on it. Wow! Saying like she knows she's how to legit. Fit you in bras, yeah. yeah make so... sure, make sure the person fitting you matches the picture, <laughs> sure, the, the photo. Yeah, because yeah, you know, wow, they probably got some crazy rules about transsexuals now coming. Well, probably. <laughs> well, it's a fitting room, not a bathroom. I don't know. So. It's coming for the fitting rooms next. Which over, over the weekend, I got m- my husband some pants from TJ Maxx. Love TJ Maxx, but the men's fitting room was super weird. It was behind this door that had an alarm on it. Yeah, because they kept the men's and women separate. Yeah, but the men's was just some. Crappy... Was it just like the? Was it just like this? The basic thing. Like, beep. 
Just... No, it was like, dee, dee, dee. it looked like an emergency exit they had retrofitted. What? <laughs> but I was like, can I go in there with him? He's like, oh, yeah. Then like, and whatever. you know, made no deal. You know, because I have to help my husband. It's just, I have to help him with clothes. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like clothes shopping. But like, if I go, I'll find like a style that I like. Yeah. Like the same brand is like, okay, I'll try one. Uh, okay. This one fits fine. I'm going to go back out. I'll find the exact same shirt in like two or three other colors. Oh, it's the same thing. And I'll grab them and go. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how I do my clothes shopping. Then you're done. So I'm lazy like that. But I've got, I don't remember the last time I actually had to go shopping. Cause you don't have to dress for work. Me too. I don't dress up anymore. And I love clothes. I love clothes. I uh I dress I dress up to go walk my dog. Like I'll be like, ooh, I'll pick an outfit out. I'm like, what? Because I just don't I don't get out during the week. Yeah. Because of my That's dog. why you're getting cat called when you're walking your dog is because you're dressing up all <laughs> fancy, looking like you're ready to go out on the town. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miss Fancy Pants. Yeah, they're probably like, Wow. Why is she out in an evening gown? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Just walking my dog. <laughs> All right. So not not much to the end. There's not really story. much to the I, I don't see it taking off. Because God, no. you want your boobs held up. Yeah. You just I do. just don't get it. No. Nope. So, you know, I found that article. Done. The next day yeah. I found this and I was like, okay, this kind of ties in with the other story. Um so this was from Mike.com, like M-I-C. I'm assuming it's Mike, pronounced yeah. Mike like as in microphone. Mm -hmm. um, this was dated May the 3rd, 2016. It says, the hidden message of Victoria's Secret's new unpadded bras is small breasts are better. I don't know about small breasts are better. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say that big breasts are better. I just, you know, whatever. Who's to say what's better? That's my thought. You know, it's it's really I have no preference um, from a guy's standpoint. Um, I guess that may up to a certain point. There's probably such a thing as too big. Because oh my god, yeah. because because I I in my head I see somebody with really big boobs and I genuinely start thinking, man, her back her must back. hurt. Yeah, the... <laughs> like she just must be miserable. That poor woman. Oh yeah. Uh... Um. But anyway, so so what this was about, I guess Victoria's Secret, and I never knew this until you just kind of confirmed this a little bit ago when your husband was in here talking. But Victoria's Secret only carries up to a certain size bra, forty triple D, which I didn't even D. know. You cannot go into like a standard mall Victoria's Secret storefront and find forty triple D. That's probably going to be a no, special. That's going to be an online thing. Yeah. Um. Because the whole the whole point, I think I think the thing that put Victoria's Secret on the map probably, or at least put it in the forefront of my mind years ago, would have been you know when they they created the push up bra. Like I remember when that came out, that was just like the big thing. Yeah, and then there were the angels. And, and the angels, like, yeah. What was the deal with the angels? Were... I don't remember what that specific thing was. I mean, I remember like seeing the ads and the girls had the big wings and stuff coming That's off it. their back. That was their. That whole... was just so. So the push up bra and the angels thing basically was the same thing. They were just using the angels as the yeah, advertising yeah, they would showcase gimmick. the bras, and then oh my gosh, they would stick diamonds on the bra. It was just like their oh, their grief. fashion show. Okay, but they were usually push up and like lots of push up on these skinny waif models. Right. Like you don't have those kind of boobs. Like Kara Knightley. Boom! There they go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then probably some makeup over the top of that to like. Oh yeah, probably like drawing it in. Yeah, and, yeah, that that definitely happens. Yeah. So there's they're now. I don't know. Do you think it's like the '60s waif thing coming back? They they have these no padded bras. They're like it's sexy now. Well, thank you, Victoria's Secret, for telling us what's sexy. Yeah, I I don't know. I kind of I don't know if that I would say that I got offended for women because of that. <laughs> I don't know. It was just kind of like why why is this even an issue? But then but then I was like, okay, well, I don't have to wear a bra, so. Maybe that maybe it is an issue, and I don't know about it. Oh, um, it's a, it's a, it's an issue to the point where you're going out shopping for a bra, and all you can find is stuff where half of half of the cup is full of foam, and you're like, okay, no, 
They they say this that Victoria's Secret bombshell can like do two cup sizes. Okay. The the you like add two cup sizes. Hmm. Okay. I because of because of the extra foam and stuff extra in foam. there. It's only foam at the bottom. Have you ever looked at one of them? No. <laughs> okay. It's crazy because outside it looks. I've like only that. even like stepped inside of a Victoria's Secret store like one time really? ever in my entire life, maybe <laughs> twice tops. But I know I know I've been in there once. I'll say twice, maybe. And then okay, so so the bra looks like this from the side, but then half of it is like. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, is, I'll draw it for you. Okay, well, no, I, well, I was following the shape, but where was the woman's chest when you were drawing like this, is, like facing me or coming out from? That's you? what the bra looks like. Let's say that's the bra right there. Okay. All of that's the padding. There's her ball. Her Hang your on. boob is basically resting on top of this. Yeah, there's her like. That's her. That's her rib. That's her ribs rib right there. Okay, right so there. so nipples roughly this area here. Boom. There's your nipple. Okay. The bra. So now so now I know which direction we're facing here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're just you're just boob is on top of this whole pile of padding. Okay, because the only thing that I knew about bras is some of them have wires underneath, and if it pops out, it it hurts. It does. The mm. wire goes like this. Okay. And usually, if that does pop out, it's like a plasticky thing right there that gotcha. it will stab it's, straight into your skin. You said it will or it won't. It won't. It won't. That plastic cap kind of stops, uh, but it's like. But it's it's there it's enough to hurt. Yeah. yeah, you know it's there. Yeah, it See, should it, it ever free itself. That just sounds <laughs> so weird and awkward the and painful. The padding is weird. It just, yeah. I mean, I... I'm all in favor of this, whatever. Okay. Let's... I mean, I would say that I would be in favor of it too, as long as you know, it made people be more comfortable. I mean, as long as I guess... I... I remember reading something before and I, it had something to do with breast cancer and it was like talking about, I know there was some story before or it was a myth that if you went without a bra or if you slept in a bra, what? Hey, it was something about if you slept in a bra that you were more likely to develop cancer. I, I think they disproved it. But there was like this myth about it or something. I don't remember where I read that. But, the, you know, because there was a whole thing about, you know, women should not sleep in a bra. So try to prevent this from happening. Let it be more. Fr yeah, I don't but know. Now, now they've come out with I, sleep bras. Do you know that? No, I don't even know what that is. I mean, to me, that's what it almost sounds like this would be. Because it, yeah. it doesn't have any extra support in it. It's just kind of there to help cover you up if you have small boobs too you don't need to you don't need all this underwire and everything like yeah because there's nothing there to support yeah you it's not it's just your your perky and i would well i would assume your perky <laughs> that would be kind of a sad situation oh come on <laughs> so people on twitter reacted and said oh they're called they're not called bras they're called bralettes yeah, like the okay. younger cousin of the bra. Okay. So <laughs> someone said, "Yo, screw you, Victoria's Secret, and your bralette that literally no one with boobs bigger than a B can wear." That's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. And you know what? That's if they want to market to those people with smaller boobs, that's fine. I mean, I mean, it's kind of what they were doing before, but they were saying, "Okay, we'll market these people with smaller breasts, but we're gonna help you make them look bigger." And yeah, maybe, and maybe, and maybe you know, that's that been was, their gimmick for years. Yeah. So to see them turn on their heads like this and say, and I, "I mean, I think it's good because you know, you maybe they've been given all these girls this stigma that they didn't need to have of, you know, oh man, my boobs, yeah, are, my boobs are too small. I got to do stuff to make them look bigger. Oh yeah, it's hardcore. When when a girl has small boobs, she like she will go to some lengths." And just, yeah. So, I mean, I feel bad. And feel ashamed about it. And that sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think that necessarily big boob, 
yeah, there's this thing that says this toxic idea that big boobs are better. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think it probably depends on just the frame of your body. As long as you're proportionate. They I said would think... that. They said it doesn't. I, I've heard this this study like it doesn't matter your waist size. So long as women are hourglass shaped, men will find them attractive. So long as their waist to hip ratio is right. I could like it looks like I could that. Kind of see that maybe. They will find it them attractive. They say that's why that what's she's a really God, she must be like a size twenty. That Tess Munster, have you ever heard of her? I don't know. She's got an hourglass figure, but she is she's a bigger girl. She's a big girl. But but because you of don't that really ratio, notice it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> there's some rule about it that that yeah like, i mean I, I know there's like scientific mm-hmm. rules about stuff like because i know there's one about like the shape of your face like certain key points like what's the more symmetric whoa the more symmetrical the face is and you hit these certain key points the more the more attractive the face is considered to be and stuff like that like i remember watching there was some documentary thing i saw years ago that i want to say john cleese actually was the hope like he what? hosted it yeah john cleese hosted it um oh what's her name um i'm having a total brain fart on her name she played in the first austin powers movie she was the dart with the brunette oh oh, oh god oh my god i want to say her name's elizabeth something but I elizabeth need to you're right um, elizabeth god dang it I'm blanking so hard and I'm there with you. Yeah. She's Elizabeth. It's Elizabeth something. <laughs> she was she was like the they're kind of their model for this. So they like, you know, they mapped her face, they showed all these little points in it all. Well, first it was like just kind of a line drawing of saying, okay, here's where we say scientifically all these certain points are and they match up. And then they just took her picture, just a, just pulled her hair back, just a no makeup, just a real plain picture of her, and like went and slid this over and like everything just matched up. I heard attractiveness, though, is how much of a composite you are of everybody. I like, could see that. The more, like, they showed two people melded together, you know, yeah. when they do those face melds. Yeah, I it love looking at those. terrible. Yeah. They did three people. Okay, it started to look more like a person. But you start doing They more did, and like, more. 80, and the person was, like, drop-dead gorgeous. Right. Like, you have, to, it's basically how average you can look is how beautiful yeah. you are yeah pretty much yeah or Makes just like sense. how many different elements you have in your face <clears throat> i don't know yeah think about that too hard it makes your brain start to hurt yeah i was like oh so so beauty is actually whoever looks the most average the average which is weird yeah really weird yeah that got deep. <laughs> that did get deep <laughs> for us i know like we're supposed to be dick and fart jokes and we're I getting know. all but no, I think that I think this is a good topic. You know, maybe maybe we help somebody out there that's got body image issues or something that thinks they're just. It didn't always and... used to be great to have these like to have boobs and stuff too. You know, like it used to be like oh, skinny, skinny, skinny is the way to go. You know. Yeah, it's like you know, there's for every body type that's out there there is somebody else that is really into that body type. Yeah, no kidding. Like, I won't get all the ins and outs of it, but it's like, you know, <laughs> I, I know what I like. It's not going to be what everybody else likes. Mm-hmm. So it's just that's just the way it is, and I'm not going to fault anybody for looking the way that they look. Yeah, really. Just, you know, because it's not my style. But whatever. Anyway, we're getting too deep. We need to, we need to be making more jokes here. Um. I truly, I, I, I think know I, we in can high talk school about, it was, um, there was a certain amount of shame about it. They had the itty bitty titty committee. Oh, I remember hearing people complain about those. Yeah. Yeah. And like <laughs> boys, boys would say something, even girls. Yeah. They'd say things to other girls about if they well, were girls, really I could see girls being meaner about stuff than probably the boys would. I don't Maybe. remember, honestly. I don't remember a whole lot of it happening at my school no, just because. Why. We we went to such a small school that I know I never saw like the around. outrageous bullying because I went to just yeah I think my school was a smidge larger than your graduating class yeah and it was just 
I didn't. I think it really sheltered me from a lot of the high school. Yeah. Well, we had some, we had some bullies early on, and for whatever reason, they just kind of got weeded out. They would either move away, get expelled, drop out, <laughs> whatever. Like just little things here and there, just kind of slowly weeded them out. So by the time probably tenth grade hit on, they just they weren't an issue anymore at that point. I don't think. No, I don't remember anything extreme. I really so, don't. Like the other day on Facebook, like I saw somebody had written to, I don't know, it was this girl from our high school that had gotten really attractive after. But after she the was, fact. She's yeah. all, I mean, she was just, you know, didn't, yeah. wasn't like doing her hair or trying to be vampy in, in high school. Right. And somebody wrote like, didn't I always tell you those pricks would like eat their words? And I'm like, I don't what? remember anybody actually talking actually shit back to, then, yeah, yeah i don't remember anybody actually doing that unless yeah. it was inside their own group and they were like infighting in, in I maybe don't know, but i don't remember any bullies like like a cheerleader coming by and like yanking somebody's head. like no it just didn't shit. happen yeah. huh so so anywho so well we'll move on to the next one this is the last actual yes no. article this is i think this is the one you're probably more excited about freaking excited I only picked now this this is actually a few uh, months old. This was this is on yeah, Huffington Post. This is January. like from back in Jan yeah, mm -hmm. in January. Um I will warn people ahead of time that if you go click on this link, and it even says like the headline says men's lingerie exists, and here are the NSFW non safe for work pictures. Yeah. Um and even like the little subtitle under that says, What is men's lingerie? Do men need it? So many questions. I will answer that now. Do they need it? <laughs> no. What, really? Oh, I think it was the goofiest thing ever. Like, there's pictures out here, like, don't open these pictures up at work, people. Like, they're not Photoshop censored very well. You can see the outline of penises. Yeah. And then, like, as Amanda's pulling this stuff up, her husband happens to walk in the room. He's like, yeah. what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> and, I, and the whole time, I'm, and I'm thinking, like, I am so sorry. <laughs> This is my he fault. He caught me unawares. This is my fault. I was like, fault. oh, well, this is this is our podcast. He's like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. So, um, um, yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's she's like purposely not scrolling up very much. Just I'm gonna yet. scroll up after I. She's she's catching back up. <gasps> Whoa! It even says lingerie is defined as women's underwear and clothing that is worn in bed. So the definition of lingerie, lingerie is, is a feminine one. Yeah. <clears throat> so and they were i mean these things were pretty feminine looking really i don't i don't see your average man like manly man i put this, this stuff. on my husband in a heartbeat i don't think i'd be caught dead in these now that's the difference just, though just for me you just for you yeah you would pick it to put on him no he'd never would be he... like caught in a car crash <laughs> like, right <laughs> we gotta we gotta cut his pants off like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice knowing you honey <laughs> But here's the thing: if if a lady's got on drawers like that underneath her dress or jeans, like that's not weird to yeah. wear like lacy see through right. things. I think this is this is more specifically, I think, bedroom attire. You know, why? that's really I think the, what this comes down to. You know, because ladies only need the crotch of their underwear to be to something be opaque, covered. and yeah, yeah, the rest of it is like see-through city it whereas could be. yeah whereas a guy and i think that's that's why these are very much not safe for work pictures is depending on the guy you're going to need <laughs> maybe significantly more room that what we're looking at here it's like basically this blue lacy stuff here's some black lace there's some black ones that are a lot smaller as far as like that looks like bottom. girl yeah that looks just... like that looks to me like um they refer to them as the boy shorts, but it's like women's underwear mm -hmm. that they refer to as the boy shorts. I never understood why it was called that, other than just the fact that they more similarly resemble boxers, but just shorter. I don't know. Rather, because it is, they're, just like, they're straight across, kind of like a pair of boxers would be as opposed to tidy whities or whatever. Yeah. Um, they don't look comfortable. No, God, no. Because... You know, that's the chafing. I, that's my point. The lace on that would have the that's because even on the ladies' stuff, they don't put the lace 
uh, on right that on part. your vagina. Like, no, God, that would kind of hurt. I, I, <laughs> and they didn't pay any consideration. They, they could have done a nice opaque like strip through here. I, I'm going to make a statement here. I don't know if I'm right or not, but I'm probably right. Okay. Most most of the time, when people you know they they see really shitty looking bras or underwear, the woman's first complaint is, "Oh, this was designed by a man." This shit was totally designed <laughs> by a woman. <laughs> like, there's because you just pointed out there is no. There's no account for the scratchiness or chafing it or anything like that. It would be uncomfortable as hell to wear this. Like, there's there's no way I would wear that. Then that one's a more. I, I find that a little bit more tasteful. The suspenders. It's, the, it's the, not. It's not even the suspenders. Just the box. Now, see, it's plaid, and I don't it's do not plaid. Even much from. That regular just looks like regular. Underwear. That looks yeah. like regular underwear Thank with you. like suspenders attached, yeah, that's and a stupid it. little bow tie. What? Well, yeah, I'm like, what is hanging down his neck? I think it, it's just the string. It's just this He's just really tied lame on his ass. Bow tie. They just tie on. It's just like, you know, do your little loop like you're tying a shoestring wow. on the back. It's Excuse a schoolboy outfit. Oh my god, uh, that is why so did stupid. Tie up? School boy out. See, this one I could have done without. It's just a tie, and then it's literally just a sock with like a clear elastic band mm-hmm. that's going around the dude's waist. If I if I tried to my my wife would probably laugh her ass off at me if I tried to pull anything off like that. It's just that looks I don't know. French maid. The French maid. Oh my god, that's totally There's what that is. There's a song that like has a that has a French maid style. I would love that. You get a feather you duster. You guys, you guys just have. I even have a want time. him to go full on with like the the little cap. Yes, no kidding. Oh my god, your poor husband. I I need to apologize to him as soon as we're done. I'm going to do this. God, this is this the goofiest. Weird. This one is the goofiest looking one here because it's actually a two piece. It's like very, candy. it's very feminine looking underwear. Like, it's shaped. It's actually shaped like women's panties, lilac and then it's got and lacy. Yeah, um, and it's like a, it's like a full top, but sheer. Why is like I, lace is a no no on men? Like they just don't wear it. It's not because it looks like you're wearing a doily, and those aren't really very feminine looking either. I don't know. It's just it's not my thing, and and by no means am I like all man like super he man. Got to be butch and buff. This, it's this just is, this, I just don't see. This is cross dressing. I feel like you'd have to be comfortable cross dressing. Yeah, that. I mean there is a market. You know, I could definitely see the gay community probably would love this stuff, but you know, just go out. And but get I don't some have. Women's. But yeah, I get just yourself some larger size women's underwear. You're good to go. I guess. I mean, there, there's a market. I'm definitely, I am not the demographic for this stuff. Yes. And I think that's, and I think that's the thing that bugged me. But I mean, if I, if I put myself in somebody else's shoes, I could see how there may be some appeal to somebody. This one is just stupid. So there's a, there's a fireman outfit kind of. But where your junk that's would be, stripper. That's stripper it's level. it's stripper attire. It yeah. really is, yeah, that's that is. and it's basically the water. That's like a there's a night. there's a picture of a fire hydrant on the front, and then a little bit of like the yellow hose <laughs> with that looks like the nozzle at the end of it, just kind of hanging down. And what's weird is they show it from the back, and the dude is standing far enough with his legs spread far enough apart. There's probably some a, Photoshop he's going on there. On. He's got a power stance going on, and you can see like the hose hanging down between his legs up front. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it's probably hollow because they're intending for somebody to stick their junk down the hose. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, that. it would be. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Thong. this thing's like. Green, and you're calling it what? Oh, they're calling it a jock strap. It looks like a thong. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They say there's an the elephant. Funniest for last. The, the, yeah. There's nothing sexy about this. No, it is the worst looking thing. It's like it's a waste of yarn. Yeah, it's basically boxers that are. It looks like somebody's grandma made it. Yeah, they did because it's Etsy. 
Oh, well, yeah, there you go. And Etsy's like the handmade stuff. Yeah, yeah. somebody sat around like, oh, I think the world needs an elephant. It's like Dumbo underwear. Because they did. They put ears on it. Now, granted, they're not like Dumbo-sized ears, but um, that's the only thing that comes to mind. All right. And I Stuff you can't unsee. Does, you know, this is stuff you can't unsee. I'm all for it. I'd make my husband dress up. You know, I'm glad you're into it. I I was I was very hesitant to even send the link. I was like, you know what? We're both adults. We can get through this. And surprisingly, like I I figured, you know, I was I really afraid that you was going to be offended that I that I sent that. I don't it's, know it's, what his reaction would be to all this, but I'm like, try you're whatever, out, huh? Yeah, he's always on about like. Like women are supposed to be like revered as these beautiful things, but like, you know, it, when women talk about you know penises, they're all like, ew, ah, like why can't they think penises are beautiful? I'm like, your penis is beautiful, honey. That's <laughs> I guess that's kind of a good point. You know? It is. He always makes that point, and I'm like, well, here you go. Like you could just you could have your junk revered, like you know, like women do. <laughs> Is it fun? It's scratchy, you know? <laughs> no. Ow, this hurts. Get it off. So, yeah. So, that's the underwear episode, I guess. Wow. We just talked shit about I'm, underwear. I'm glad we did that. That's, you know, I learned about bras, stuff that I didn't know. Yeah, they but... need to calm down with the amount of padding they stick in bras. Is You can find some that are just, basically, you're buying a prosthetic boob. Yeah. Because it's like not even your boob in the bra, really. It's just the, their foam in it. So yeah, right. you know, and it it could be disappointing to a guy, you know, or confusing to a guy, you know. I've first heard, date, you know, I've you're heard expecting stories a little bit like, more. Then you're like, whoa, what near. in the world? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think that that would be a total turnoff, but at the same time, it would just be a little. It would throw you, I think. Yeah, to be like, whoa, what's what, what, what in the world? Happening? What? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's all I got. I don't even. I don't even have any like real personal life stories to even can, like attribute to anything. Do you know what I had here. to do today? What's that? I had to make a trip just to drive my car around. Else, it'll sit in the driveway and the battery will go dead. Uh, you really don't get out and go anywhere. <laughs> I I don't use my car because oh, Scott's like let's let's cut down on cars. Let's yeah. just have one. And I was like no because I you know, as soon as you, as soon as you get rid of it, there's going to be something emergency. Then you have to have it. I know for that reason, and it's like when I want to drive and see my family, yeah, I don't want to nice. leave him stranded with it. But it's true. Like when the weather's nice, I just bike everywhere if I have yeah. to go because I'll just go downtown right. and I get out and drive my car around. And it's, Scott will facilitate between or um, go back and forth between let's get rid of, let's go down to one car. He's like, we should get you a nice car. Because I'm driving like a 2000 Cadillac Katera. Okay. And don't let the Cadillac fool you. This car is shit. Like, <laughs> it, it, it was the it, shit back in 2000. I looked it up. Now, yeah. And they've nicknamed it the Katerable in like oh. these online forms. Because the electrical shit just like just, whoosh, just goes oh, back. Oh, wow. Well, in Florida, I got caught in a flash flood with that thing. Uh oh. Which compounded all. Because I guess oh, they had no. put. And tell me this is fucking stupid. They put an electrical box underneath my seat. That doesn't sound like a good So once the one. water came up over the tires, which it did cuz Oh, you just did. Flash didn't. floods are a thing. Like it got into the and like just my horn wouldn't shut off. It just shorted everything out. Everything. And that's not even where the fuse box is located. They just stick like there's so much elect It was like in the in 2000 when they're like, "Oh, electronics are the future. Let's just stick a bunch of shit in." And yeah. Huh. It's, it's terrible. It's cut terrible. It's cut terrible. So, but I vowed, like, no, I will drive that piece of shit around until totally I drive it just until <laughs> it breaks. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, that's when we had to get my wife's car because she had it paid off and everything. Oh her yeah, old, that her thing's... old her old car was paid off, and then something something broke on it, and it was gonna cost more to fix it yeah, than what I'm the car was worth. And we're just like, screw it, just we'll buy a new car, I guess. I went through the car wash, like you know that car wash you do right is when it's turning nice and you're like all right i'm not gonna have to do this again yeah. for a while because winter's over <laughs> yeah it ripped the 
like that decorative molding off of my um the back of my one of my side view mirrors oh no and i was like not even upset about it i was like, <laughs> like well that happened this is slowly <laughs> my car slowly like getting revealed like robocop like <laughs> or like the ter- no like the terminator like slowly was just, like the skin's ripping falling off. off yeah that's funny so so yeah, I, I, find, I find myself having to drive my car just so the battery won't die. And it was on it was on like your side mirror or something that came off? Yeah, side mirror just ripped the plastic that covers it wow. right off. So. Well, that'll give me here. That gives me actually a really short story. So the very the very first new car I ever bought. I've never gotten a new car. I ever since I got this, I've always that was the first new car I bought. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I've always leased stuff just because I have a short attention oh, span. See, he, Scott tells me to lease, and I'm like, no, I'm just always going to buy a used car. He's like, you're an idiot. Is leasing, like, good? It depends. It's good for me. I, however, I say that the car I've got now, I'm probably going to keep. I like it enough. I'm going to keep it. Plus, with us, you know, trying to pay off the land, mm-hmm. build a house, I'd much rather get, you know, keep the car I've got, eventually get that paid off, insurance will go down, car payment will go down, stuff like that. Um, but I've always, I, I looked at when I was, you know, how often was I going through cars? And I got, I noticed I was getting a new car every three or four years. I would just, I would start getting bored with what I had. I wasn't anything wrong with it. I was just bored. I need something newer. I just, that's how I am mentally. Okay. I always got to have something new. Mm-hmm. Um but my very first new car, I had a, a silver Scion TC. It was right when Toyota first started doing the Scion. Okay. Thing. That was just their big thing. Um, and they were cheap. They were nice looking, you know. They were cheap? Oh, yeah. They were really? not, not like fall apart cheap. They were, they were, right. they, they were, were affordable. They were, yeah. they were inexpensive and affordable. That's how I should phrase that. Because really? cheap, cheap has connotations of just being junk. You know, this thing was nice. I liked it. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting it. And like I, when I initially, was getting it to drive off the lot. It had like 40 miles on it. Like that's how new it was. Shit. That's, oh no, I've never done that. Um, and I think that was probably the lowest mileage I've ever got on a new car. Because even what I had now, like they had to drive it down from somewhere else. So I had like a couple hundred miles on it when I pulled it off Mine the has lot. been 60,000 miles. <laughs> that's the lowest I've ever yeah. got. But so while I'm in, you know, we test drive it and everything. And while I'm doing the paperwork, they just one of the things they would do, they would go clean it out one final Mm -hmm. time give it another wash do all this stuff for you while i'm in it's just me and my dad there and i'm signing all the paperwork this dude comes like you see this dude like kind of motion for the sales guy so he exits the office and they're talking for a minute and the guy comes back in he's like oh boy i don't i don't know how to say this so i'm just going to come out and say it he's like so they went and they washed the car and as they were backing it i don't know why they didn't pull through as or maybe as they were pulling in you know how like they have little just cement posts to tell you to come in yes. so far or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's like the dude wasn't paying attention and hit the post and knocked the driver's side mirror clean <laughs> off the car. Um, so we understand if you want to just like scrap this whole thing or do you want to try to fix it? Like, what do you want to do? Like, oh I, my god, I totally had him by the nuts at that point, and I was just like, just fix it. I was like, I'm good. They they basically give me another car off the lot as a rental or whatever for a couple of days, and because they had they didn't stock that mirror there, so they had to overnight one in, put it on, and then I went back a couple of days later. And Did they take that anything off your car? Anything off the price for? I don't think I don't think I was thinking to tell them to do that. I oh. was just like, because I'm a laid back guy. I'm like the dude. Yeah, you know? I was just you like are it happened. I'd be like, I was like, it is? happened. Just fix it. And I'm good. I'm not going to pitch a bitch about it. Sure. It was an accident. Um, But yeah, so didn't even get my new car off the lot and shit was getting knocked off of it. So yeah, my very first car I had the passenger mirror got pulled off. Um, I used to drive my very, very first car was like this Oldsmobile Delta 88. I had an Oldsmobile too. I loved it. It was a boat of a car. I didn't have so much. I had an Oldsmobile Sierra. Loved I don't remember it. that one, but um, total, total grandma car. Yeah, mine was a grandma, yes. grandpa car. Um, it was like a champagne color. Mine was a navy. It was so dignified. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember the first winter 
after I got my car, maybe in the second winter. I'm driving home from school, and we actually got let out early because it was snowing so bad. Yeah. And somehow or another, get a wheel off the edge of the road, get sucked up, just sucked up in the snow drift, and it just pulled me right up along beside this fence. And if you know, like old rural, rural areas, mm-hmm. they got the big chain link fence like for pastures for cows or whatever just a really big hole and my my mirror you know it started kind of bending it up a little bit but basically where i stopped the mirror is like right inside one of those holes (laughs) how do you do that it's just that's how it stopped sweet yeah but it didn't stay there because once you know it didn't even have a tow truck like somebody got a tractor because that's because we're out in the country somebody went and got a tractor and hitched a chain up to it and when they pulled me out the mirror was caught there and it just ripped the mirror right off. And you we just grabbed it. We just this. grabbed it and threw it in the trunk. And you, you didn't even try to like pull it out. There was there oh, any way no, to no, pull no. it out. It was. Oh no. Where, where the car was like, I could not try to drive it forward or backward. I was stuck. Oh, okay. And like the only way to get it out, you would actually have to slide the car like sideways oh. to get it out of there. Like there was no getting it out. So as they back it up, just it got snapped off. And you knew that was a conclusion. It was it, like, and it yeah. stayed, and it stayed gone until I got rid of the car. I think we went and bought another one. You just lived life without a. I just use the rearview mirror, and I'd look over my shoulder that way to make See, sure nobody was there. My mirror is still there, so from the from my point of view, it doesn't look like anything screwed up. Oh, okay. It's slow because, like, oh god, when we moved into this house, do you know how close that telephone pole is to the? I've driveway i've not paid attention but i'll look oh my it's so super close yeah so i'm backing out and i want to i want to you know just head toward downtown yeah so boom just immediately oh. hit the- <laughs> wow i'm really glad that i've got because i almost ran into a post at my property the other day luckily my car's got all the sensors on it so as soon as you start getting close to something oh. beep, 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 it just starts going nuts You're like, all right which drives me nuts i end up turning it off a lot of time when you go through a drive through Oh God! It, I bet it's just freaking. you just drive up, just driving up to the window to drive through, and it's like, hang on, you got to hurry up and turn it off because you can't hear because it's ridiculous loud. Um, yeah, there's a car coming up on your left. No, it's just the bush. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's the crap that I deal with now. You know, love technology. Yep, but just making your life simpler, isn't making it? it simpler, and driving me nuts at the same time because <laughs> it's got a sensor in it. Like if somebody starts to slow down. And you don't hit the brakes fast enough, it'll light up some red light on the windshield. Does it take over windshield. and brake for you though? Never try. I don't. Yeah, I've not. <laughs> I've not gambled with that. I don't know if it's got the brake assist on mine or not. I have to go back and look and see. But you, you'd be a fool but, to like miss the the sirens. Yeah, it's it's basically this. There's a string of red LED lights. It flashes up. It makes the windshield really bright red and just this beep, beep, beep. But it only really does it to me like when I'm already like pulling up slow behind other cars. Oh, and you're like. And like I'm already riding the brake. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Yes, I know they're stopping because I'm stopping too. It's just. Sounds like a dream car for a texter and driver. Kind of. I mean, that one drives itself as far as keeping it between the lanes if you have it set right it's not an actual auto driving car but it's got enough it's got lane keeping sensors in it and stuff but you have to hit the button to turn it on yeah i'll show you sometime i need a new car so no i don't but i mean we just sit in the driveway till the battery died that's you know i told him i wanted everything in it and i got everything in it except for the thx sound system that i really wanted and I wasn't going to refuse the car just because I didn't get that. So, my but I car had doesn't even else. have radio right now. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it doesn't. Do you even have a cassette? It's got a CD player. Okay. okay. It Does the CD player the... work? No. it Because uh, once I had to replace that electrical box underneath my seat, oh, so just it turned on theft lock. What the fuck? How do I turn off theft lock? There's no way unless I drive it into a dealership and, like, I don't know, pay, pay it, how yeah, much money. So I'm like, fuck it. So I drive around with headphones on, which like, is that's... illegal. <laughs> But I see so many people doing. You it. just need a little boom box to set in your car. I do. I need like a, like a nineties like. There you listen, go. Listen I've got a. Sync. Okay. Yeah. That's very specific. <laughs> Anywho, well, we've been going a 
about an hour now. I wow, think. I can't believe that. Yeah. I need to. Time flies when you're talking about undies. I guess. <laughs> so I never, I, I didn't think we would string that out as long as I, we did. I didn't think so either. But we got educational there, which was a good thing. I, you know what? We actually, we did good. We kept, we kept the dick and fart jokes to a minimum. We were so mature about talking <laughs> I feel, about underwear. I feel like we, like, I'm going to break my arm, pat myself on the back. <laughs> so anyway, I think, uh, I think it's a good place to stop. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching us on YouTube, leave us a like below, leave us a comment, let us know what you think of the show, how much you love it. Um, how much you think uh, this goofy men's lacy, lacy underwear is just really? I hope everybody's like, needed. yeah, they're all for it. I, the ladies, the ladies would love it, and I think that's what it's designed for. I seriously think it's like, because be real, most women's lingerie is designed probably for men's appeal, but for for usually a man to sit back and. Oh, enjoy yeah, enjoy yeah, the female yeah. form with that. So I think this is just you know turn that on its head and flip flopping it around. I'm excited. But I think whatever. It's the future. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um. Anyway, yeah, I I'm surprised that you know I brought it up and then I'm here the one dogging it. It's kind of weird. I know. Yeah. But I wanted to, but I wanted to be fair. You know, that's why I, that's why I brought it up. I was trying to be fair and share for everybody. So rather than just all being one sided and talking about just boobs. That's true. So, we like so. to mix it up here. I, whatever. Anyway, we're going to go, um, say bye, Amanda. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys have a good night. Bye.